being a flame warm and bright, a candle of hope in December's dark night, while angels sing blessings from heaven's starry sky, our hearts we prepare now for Jesus is
morning. morning. That was perfect timing, Pastor. That was. was (laughs) Good morning and uh, welcome to worship at uh, Rehoboth Lutheran Church in Baden. For all you all you people out on social media and here here in the sanctuary, Um, we just have a few announcements today. We have a congregational meeting directly after worship on December 19th. We're gonna um, go over the preliminary budget and um, et cetera. So it's directly after worship on December 19th. The Southwoods Hospital uh, for Boys, we're still collecting donations for that. Uh, You might've seen an email go out. And uh, for Amazon shopping, oh yeah, that would be better. Lori, do you mind reporting on that? Without putting you on the spot, or no, I am so excited to just say that we have seventy percent of our goal already made in one week for from the parish. So that is so exciting. I can actually um, add some more to it. Um, so if you're interested in giving, but not someone that likes to shop online, can make a donation. Thank you, Lori. Um, we have a What the Faith gathering at Papa Dukes in Center Township. Uh, it's parish wide, and this is for. Do you want to talk about that? Or? Okay. Well, that's nothing unusual. Um, we're going to gather. It's for people to for you for you to bring friends who have maybe been damaged by the church or don't understand faith or don't understand the church. Um, that you can bring them with you, and the pastors will be there to discuss. And did I read the first drink is on you guys? Yeah, first drink is on you. Yeah, I remembered that part. <laughs> first. First. Oh. <laughs> the first round's on them. So, um, if, you don't, if you don't have friends, that's fine. You can still come out. We're, we're wanting people to bring their questions their doubts, their hurts, whatever. We just, we want to make a safe space for people who have things to say about the church and don't have a safe place to say it out loud. That's what we're trying to do here. So if you have some of that, please bring it. If you have friends that have that, bring your friends. I said it at her today. My friends are already be there because I only have two. Pastor Pastor John. <laughs> so please, Papa Boots right next to Faith on Friday right Road in Santa Passion. And the first uh, first round is on uh, and that's only drinking stuff. We're not buying your dinner, okay? <laughs> Heather, did you have something? Me too. Okay. Um, Heather. Are there any other announcements? Yes. For those who were, uh, had made a request, uh, Matt and Tom Lyon are now on uh, YouTube as well as Facebook. Great. I don't know if everybody heard that, so I'll repeat it. Um, Matins is now on YouTube. And did you say something else? I could. I... Compline. Compline and Mattins are now on YouTube for those of you who don't have Facebook. So that's wonderful news. Thanks for doing that, Dave. We are famous. Is there any other announcements? Build up numbers of followers on there so we can make money on them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. With that said, let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship. I did.
did want to say one thing about offering and worshiping online, which I don't think we've ever told you before. If you go to House of Prayer website and click on their donate button, there's a drop down box that includes Rehoboth. So you can donate to Rehoboth on House of Prayer's website. Pastor Mike promised me that they'll send the money to us. <laughs> I, I will talk to the treasurer though, because I trust her more. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I meant their treasure. I trust you, but you know, you never know what he's going to do. Please rise. We are gathered in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are invited to observe these days of Advent in repentant faith, preparing our hearts, minds, and lives for the incarnation of God the Son, and contemplating our call to live in joyful hope. Therefore, let us nourish our commitment to discipleship. Lord, our God, we lament our sin and we confess our attraction to the errant world that does not want to know Christ. Prepare us for his coming. Forgive us, purify our hearts, conform our minds and wills to yours and keep us faithful that when he appears, he will find us ready and joy-filled. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. Jesus comes among us to reveal divine, infinite love, to offer abundant life to all, and to declare that God has had mercy on you, forgives you all your sins, and strengthens you in all goodness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.
Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. You alone can save us from the danger of our sin. Cleanse us of the trappings of the world. Give us your strength, your righteousness, and your faithfulness. And clothe us with the awe and peace of your gentle reign, that we may rightly prepare to celebrate your incarnation. We pray in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. <laughs> Please be seated before, through the last line of the hymn off that page, did you notice? <laughs> But also, since it said, please be seated in a place where it doesn't usually say that, and you all sat down anyway, now I'm going to put little things in the bullet just to see what you all do. <laughs> yeah, up and down, raise your hand, you know, <laughs> sit sideways. That'll be fun. Do you have any kids today? Now, Amy, you have to go put the thing on the banner, please. Don't get nervous. Just go down there. It's all prepared for you. See Mary and Joseph. This is a reading from Isaiah chapter 40. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. And now Amy will light the Advent candles while we sing to her. The first lesson is written in the book of Isaiah, the 49th chapter, beginning with the seventh verse. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, to one deeply despised, abhorred by the nations, the slave of rulers. Kings shall see and stand up, princes, and they shall prostrate themselves because of the Lord, who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, who has chosen you. Thus says the Lord, in a time of favor, I have answered you. On the day of salvation, I have helped you. I have kept you and given you as a covenant to the people to establish the land, to apportion the desolate heritages, saying to the prisoners, come out to those who were in darkness, show yourselves. Now sh they shall feed along the ways on all the bare heights shall be their pasture. They shall not hunger or thirst, neither scorching wind nor sun shall strike them down, for he who has pity on them will lead them, and by springs of the water will guide them. And I will turn all my mountains into a road, and my highways shall be raised up. Sing for joy, O heavens, and exalt, O earth. Break forth, O mountains, into singing, for the Lord has comforted his people and will have compassion on his suffering ones. But Zion said, The Lord has forsaken me. My Lord has forgotten me. Can a woman forget her nursing child or show no compassion for the child in her room? Even these may forget, yet I will not forget you. See, I have inscribed you on the palms of my hands. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll read responsibly Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 1. 
I will stand at my watch post and station myself on the rampart. And keep me. Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision, make it plain on tablets so that a runner may read it. If it seems to tarry, wait for it. It will surely come, it will not delay. Look at the brow. The second lesson is written in 1 Peter, first chapter, beginning with the 10th verse. Concerning this salvation, the prophets who prophesied of the grace that was to be made yours made careful search and inquiry, inquiring about the person or time that the Spirit of Christ within them indicated when it testified in advance to the sufferings destined for Christ and the subsequent glory. It was revealed to them that they were serving not themselves but you in regard to the things that have now been announced to you through those who brought you good news by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things into which angels long to look. Therefore, prepare your minds for action, discipline yourselves, set all your hope on the grace that Jesus Christ will bring you when he is revealed. Like obedient children, do not be conformed to the desires that you formerly had in ignorance. Instead, as he who called you is holy, be holy yourselves in all your conduct, for it is written, You shall be holy, for I am holy. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. The Lord will come to save the nations. The Lord will make the glory of his voice heard in the joy of your heart. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the first chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, to the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor, David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who is said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Anybody here that never heard this story before? Just checking. Right. What do you know about this story? But to put it more concretely, what do you think of Mary in this story? How do you think of Mary in this story? I'm not being rhetorical. 
Very brave. Yes. Fearful. Fearful. Yes. Blessed. Hopeful. Hopeful. Faithful. Faithful. Good. How old do you think she is? 14? Do you think what Gabriel said to her made any sense? No, that's a hard one, huh? What do you think she meant at the end there when she said, what did she say at the end? Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. She didn't say it like that. She had better inflection, I'm sure. But <laughs> we have this vision, even with our thoughts of Mary being brave, and Mary being faithful, and Mary being all the, the adjectives you said to me, fearful, hopeful, we have a, an image that we've been taught, I think, of Mary being meek and mild. Would you agree with that? Okay, we're in a pandemic, I don't know if you knew, and you're all wearing masks, so you have to be louder than that. <laughs> Would you agree with that? Yeah, yeah. yeah, okay, good, yeah. Yeah, always, and, you know, round yon virgin, right? Mary all humble, nobody said that one, and meek, and I don't know, sort of maybe cowering in a corner. Can you tell I dug into this further <laughs> this year? Yeah, Norma's like, oh no, yes, now what? <laughs> And into the language, especially, and into the culture. And I learned a couple of things that have completely changed my mind about, I know you didn't know I had a mind, about what's going on with Mary. And I'm not saying that what, I, what I'm about to tell you is right, or what we always learned is right, because I wasn't there, and maybe some of you were. Was anybody there? No? All right. So all we have is this to go on. But listen to this. I, this is so cool, I can hardly stand it. So there's Mary, right? And she's probably in her late teens. Because that was among the Jewish people in Palestine in the first century. That's when young ladies were betrothed in their late teens. So 16, 17. We think of her as 13 or 14, but there's a vast difference between a 13-year-old and a 17-year-old, isn't there? Yeah. And Joseph, probably, was about 10 years older, so in his mid to late 20s. Mary is in a long line of people in the Bible, I'm gonna make you think about the Bible now, I know you hate when I do that. A long line of people, ladies in scripture, who have suddenly become pregnant, who probably should not have, or probably couldn't. A long line of them, starting with who? Who can name the first one in scripture? Yay, who said that? Sticker. Sarah. Do you remember Sarah and Abraham when Yahweh told them they were going to have a baby? Oh yeah, next year when I come back you'll have a baby. Here's Abraham. Seriously? I'm 100, she's 90. Really? And here's Sarah listening outside the tent. <coughs> That's what she did. And they, Yahweh and Sarah had this great conversation then. Yahweh says, quit laughing. I didn't laugh. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. They have that conversation. Sarah's 90 years old. She's going to have a baby. Yeah, she is. She is. 
And then there's this whole line of people from her all the way down to Mary of ladies that couldn't get pregnant for whatever reason or people thought they were barren for whatever reason. As Pastor Mike pointed out this morning, yeah, we always, we always blame the woman. Nobody thinks that it's the guy's fault, the Henry VIII syndrome. But still, there's Rebecca. There's Rachel. There's Hannah. There's Samson's mom, whose name I can't ever remember, but it starts with an M. Somebody at Van Kirk said, Mom. Said, yeah. <laughs> There's, um, who else? Can you think of any others? Did I say Hannah? Yeah. Last week there was Elizabeth. Right? All these ladies... They want children, they can't have children. They pray or they don't pray, the Lord shows up and they have children. Mary's in that same line. Mary is not praying though to have a child, is she? Well, we don't, it wasn't reported that she is. But considering she just got betrothed, she's probably not. Not yet. And all of a sudden, She's minding her business one day, and an angel shows up. This would be frightening, but it wouldn't be foreign. Mary is not ignorant of scripture. Mary knows Hebrew scripture. So she knows that angels come and talk to people and tell them things, that they're messengers. She just didn't expect one to come to her. So this angel shows up and, and does not say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. And does not say, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with thee. Says something more like this. Mary, how great it is to see you. Have I got news for you? It's more along those lines. And then it says... Mary is perplexed by his words. And I always read that and, and go, you think? I think she might have been a little bit perplexed by that. Then I decided, I wonder what perplexed means, because here's what it means to us. Hmm. That word that Luke uses there that we translate as perplexed means confused terror. And the best example I have of confused terror, if you want this image in your mind, do you ever see Psycho? You know, when, when Bates, we don't know it's Bates yet, but when he pulls the curtain back on the shower, that look on Janet Lee's face, that's confused terror. That's what Mary's feeling right now. Confused terror. And then the angel says, Oh, don't be afraid. Really? How many times do we hear that in Scripture? No, I'm serious. How many times? Somebody counted. 365, which they thought was cool, one for every day of the year. So I guess on leap year we don't have to be afraid. How many of those times did somebody, an angel or the Lord, say to somebody, do not be afraid, and then told them something terrifying? <laughs> 365 of those times. Yes. Oh yeah, don't be afraid. Okay, I'm already terrified. I don't think I can get more afraid, but go ahead. Then he says, here's the good news. Remember all those predictions about Messiah? Yep. And how he's going to be savior of the world? Yep. You're going to be his mom. And notice, Mary's not scared anymore. She's still confused because she says, really? How's that going to happen since I'm a virgin? And Gabriel pretty much says, 
Don't worry about that. God will take care of it. Right? And this boy that's going to be born to you, he is God the Son. He is going to be holy. And then Mary says, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. That's where we get that meek thing, right? Because he says all of that exciting stuff, all of that incredible stuff, all of that unbelievable stuff, all of that impossible stuff. And we have this picture of Mary going, okay, okay, I'm the Lord's servant. What am I supposed to do? Not what she said. Not what she said in her language. In her language, it comes out more like this. Look at me. Can you see me? Here I am. Look at me. I got to tell you this. Bring it. Bring it on. I am ready. And yeah, I am a servant. I am a slave is the word she actually used of Yahweh. But I'm telling you, I am ready to do this. Let's go. Let's do it. Not Mary meek and mild. Mary excited and ready and willing and able and yeah. A word I can't say because we're in church, but it starts with bad. <laughs> That's what she's being. Bring it on. Let's do this. And in my head then, her reason for leaving immediately after that, because then he says, okay, let me tell you about Elizabeth. That she is so excited that Elizabeth is part of this too, that she doesn't go to Elizabeth's house to hide her pregnancy like I've been taught all my life, or that her parents decided she should go visit relatives for a while, you know, till we can straighten things out here at home. She is so excited. She can't wait to tell. Elizabeth will understand. Elizabeth's in on this. Elizabeth is also a let's do it girl. And she runs to Elizabeth with this, and she doesn't even get a chance to say it as we'll hear next week. All she gets to say is, hi Elizabeth. And Elizabeth and John are like, oh, yes. That's next week's sermon. Is this not a whole other picture of what's going on here? Because think about it. When Mary goes to see Elizabeth, what does she do? She says hello. And then what's the next thing she does? She sings a protest song about how Yah's coming and turn the whole world upside down. This is not somebody meek and mild who's just going along because they have no choice. This is a bring it girl. And she makes me want to be a bring it girl too. And when I put all these lessons together today and I landed on this verse in Peter where the Lord says, well, Here's all you have to do. Just be holy, because I'm holy. See, you all got quiet. You were quiet anyway, but that, that, uh, what? What's that mean? Who here can be as holy as Yahweh? Anybody? Hands? You're wrong. You're wrong. Tell me what holy means. See? <laughs> holy means set apart by God for God's own purpose. Everybody in this room is holy. Every one of you. Mary's holy because she has just been set apart by God for God's own purpose. This is Mary's call story. And everybody in this room has a call story, whether you know it 
I want to acknowledge it or not. Most times when we think about that, God calling us, we become perplexed. But he has called every one of us. He set us apart for his own purposes on the day of our baptism. And Gabriel just said, hey, with God, nothing's impossible. That means he can pick whoever he wants to do his will. That's what that means to me today. Ask me next year, it'll mean something different. But today, that's what it means. He can do whatever he wants. We just saw a big, long line of women that he chose that anybody else would have said, they can't possibly be part of God's plan of salvation. That's impossible. And Yah said, hold my meat. It's not impossible with me. Watch this. Barren lady child, barren lady child, barren lady child, barren lady child, all the way down to virgin child. Why? Because this is how he gets his plan of salvation accomplished. All those ladies are in, their kids are in line to succession to Jesus. Every one of them. If their child, their son had not been born, we wouldn't get to Jesus. Every blessed one of them. And every blessed one of them was also a let's do it girl. Every one of them. Even Sarah, she thought it was hilarious, but she still, she still had Isaac. So why would we think God couldn't use us? That's my question for the day. That's what I'm getting out of this lesson today. Why on earth would we possibly think that God's plan of salvation doesn't include us doing anything? Because I'm here, I'm right here to tell you, because that's my job, that you are. He didn't set you apart just to be set apart. He set you apart for work. One of my best examples of being set apart for God's purposes and work that we don't think this is holy at all is in, when there was the temple in Jerusalem there were shovels and rakes and buckets that the priests used at the end of the day to clean off the altar where they did the burnt offerings and to rake all that off and clean that all up and take all those ashes out. And those utensils were holy because they were set apart by God for that very purpose. What's God calling you to do? It could be the most mundane thing. I'm sure he's not calling most of us to have babies. Please, please. But he is calling us to do something. God doesn't set us apart for nothing, does he? He sets us apart for his own purpose. And that's why he's saying to us, be holy like I'm holy. What he means by that is, I have one thing on my mind, one thing. I am single-minded, and this is what I'm single-minded about. That every human being that ever lived from Adam to the last baby to be born before Jesus reappears is part of my kingdom. Everything I say to you, everything I do that you read about in scripture, all of my thoughts, all of that is about that purpose. That's my purpose. I want you to be as single-minded about that as I am. So that when I call you to be part of this, to be part of this plan, to be part of the working out of the salvation of all creation, that you respond like this. Yes, bring it! Yeah. And I can't tell you what your part in that is. You have to discern that. But you do have a part to play in there. How awesome is that? Seriously. How awesome is that? That the creator of all that exists has a part for you to play in the redemption and restoration 
of all that exists. That is pretty dang awesome if you ask me. You are holy. You are. Be holy like God is holy. I was going to say amen, but you know, amen sounds like the end. I know it means so be it. But amen sounds like the end of something, doesn't it? I don't want this to end. So I will just say this and sit down. Bring it. God has made us a holy nation through our baptism into Christ Jesus. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Lord, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, As we wait in joyful hope for the birth of Messiah, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who have need. Holy and compassionate God, out of your incomprehensible love, you have chosen us to be your holy children. Empower the people and the leaders of our parish and those of St. James, Ligonier, St. Paul, Manesson, and Community 3 for 1, Brookline, to discern the mission for which you have set us apart and to engage in our ministries with joy and thanksgiving. Merciful Lord, 
Gracious Redeemer, in your fidelity to your covenant, you have raised us for a mighty Savior, born of the house of your servant David. Give President Biden, Governor Wolf, and all who serve in our national, state, and local government the strength and will faithfully to follow his precepts and boldly to implement his justice. Merciful Lord, Almighty Lord, you clothe yourself in righteousness and win victory over all evil and corruption. Ruse your strength and help your children in want. We pray for those who are discouraged, the sick and the injured, and all who have been impacted by COVID, the destitute, those who are bereaved, and those who are facing death. And these we name before you aloud or in our hearts. Give us the confidence and compassion to bring them the comfort of you, hope in you. Merciful Lord, stir up your power. Mighty Savior, you have promised that from the West, humanity shall revere your name, and from the East, they shall adore your presence. Keep us faithful and strong in our relationship with you in this life, and that we may find unending joy before you with all your saints in the life to come. Merciful Lord, stir up your power now. Into your hands, gracious Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy to our great Lord God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful Father, we lay before you our preparations for the coming of our Messiah. Smooth out our roughness that we may be prevented from hurting others or ourselves. Renew and increase our gifts, talents, and relationships so that your love may be seen and your glory revealed among us. We pray in the name of Jesus, the one who comes. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and grace. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy. 
always and everywhere to give thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and ever-living God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, whose mother Mary listened in faith as your messenger revealed to her that her son would be the fulfillment of your promise to Israel and the realization of hope for all nations. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy. Jesus Christ in the night in which he was betrayed took bread and after giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body given for you do this for the remembrance of me When supper was ended, he took the cup, again gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, This is Jesus, root and branch of Jesse, a sign of salvation to all peoples. Come to his table and receive him. Lamb of God.
May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his precious blood strengthen you and keep you in true faith unto eternal life. Amen. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. And his mercy endures forever. We give you thanks, Almighty Lord, because you have reached out to us with your free gift of love. You have refreshed us at your table, touched our deepest needs, and called us back to a life of hope and peace. Send us out with courage and joy in the name of Jesus the Messiah, that we may be the body of Christ in him and for the world. We ask this in Emmanuel's name. Amen. Amen. Look what I found. It's that line missing from the hymn. <laughs> Don't say it. <laughs> Go forth as awakened people, aware of the world's darkness, yet reaching for the light. We see God at work in our world, and that makes all the difference. Go forth as expectant people, conscious of inequity in our midst, yet welcoming the Lord's grace and justice. We greet the Lord's new day, believing that Christ has set us free. Go forth as serving people, aware of the pain so many bear, yet confident the Lord will bring healing, often through you. We open ourselves as channels of our Lord's love, for we have heard good news and have been empowered to share it. May our almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you, deliver you from all harm, and keep you safely in the divine life. Amen. Amen. Peace of Christ be with you. And all